Hey guys, in this video I'm gonna talk a little bit about my hobbies since I was very young until now and how it all kind of evolved. So yeah, so my father put us on football training when we were, my brother was five and I was six and so we played football for some nine years, ten years in a row so we were doing training twice a week and competitions once a week and then we played a lot of football on our in our free time as well <clears throat> and just in general as kids we were just very active always moving and action 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 then I kind of got bored a little bit of, of the of the football doing it for so many years and I wanted some change so I got into martial arts so when I was 15 actually even before hold on at, at age 12 I've got first dumbbells from my uncle and started to do resistance training so that was pretty cool and then uh, at age 15 I started to do gym workouts in the in the high school and also got into the Wing Chun Kung Fu so that was a nice um, half year I couldn't really at that time I couldn't afford paying more they had always these kind of funny special uh, uh, camp at the end of the season whatever it was and it was just too costly for 15 years old back in the day in Slovakia so after half year I was pretty much training my friends and I was coaching them and uh, that's how I kept my hobby kind of active by teaching what I knew to somebody else and then you can train with them that was really good and I'd done it for maybe five six years uh, back then from 15 until maybe 21 so Wing Chun was kind of my thing uh, at 17 I got to k kickboxing uh, again I done it for maybe four months in a, in a club and then I was always kind of doing my own thing um, the kickboxing wise and so how all of these kind of uh, you know evolved all of these hobbies uh, one of them was actually uh, the photography and I only realized that few years uh, back that you know since I was a kid, maybe six, seven years old, I was taking family photos on a film camera. My father had maybe two or three cameras, so, you know, and we could develop as many films because he, in his job, he could develop films, so that was cool. So I remember taking photos of our trips, like landscapes, uh, also of us as family, as uh, birthdays and all of those type of events. So yeah, I kind of realized how, how that evolved me. So yeah, thanks to him and kind of getting me into that. So I always had interest in photography since I was very young. And I remember he, he had those kind of big reels, uh, tape reels, uh, like this magnetophone, uh, when you go from one big reel to the second big reel. And he had also some microphone and some cables there. And he had learned three of them at home. Maybe they were redundant in that job where he worked. And we're talking about like 90s. This was like late 80s, hold on, late 80s, 90s, uh, early 90s, uh, where the technology wasn't as advanced, but I remember I used to just plug it into the TV and re record a cartoon in audio only. So I don't know, we're talking about 1990, so I was eight years old, something like that. And I, I already managed to record that. I was pretty proud of myself for accomplishing that. And yeah, that was, that was very cool. Uh, just, you know, I did, without YouTube how-to videos, I just, you know, realized oh, it's possible, it can be done. So another thing was the typewriter. And, you know, I used to play with it when I was a kid. And sometimes, you know, those, like you have a normal a blank sheet of paper and you have a copy paper, you can put another blank sheet of paper and another copy paper, you can put five of these combinations and you make five copies as you type on a typewriter. So that was, for me, that was very exciting. I love that. And so when the computers came in and we, we got the computer, uh, I really was into typing and, and printing stuff as well, even the early days. So I really enjoy how the technology is evolving computers as well and yeah those are kind of like major <clears throat> interest I had when I was younger and how it all evolved into you know my uh, profession which I'm lucky enough to pursue my hobbies and invest my money and time to equipment 
So since I got into photography, I bought a really good printer and then over those next five, seven years, that printer made me enough money to pay for the printer and plus earn something. So how, you know, I always try to find something that will, you know, uh, be eventually be making me money. So that, that's, the, that's the goal and, and having, having the passion and the hobby. So as long as you have to invest and then eventually, you know, when someone recognizes your skills, ask you to do a job and eventually how, you know, you, you earn money doing it. So it's, a, it's like an asset and your skills as well. Another hobby was um, I've got into uh, hiking, uh, running, uh, running the mountains, for example, and stuff like that. And then also kayaking. Uh, my knees got really sore after running and hiking a lot, so I got too much tension in my quads, and I didn't really know how to treat it. So for me, back then, uh, 12 years ago, 13, 14 years ago, it came to me as the smartest thing to do was just to stop doing the hiking and running and I bought a kayak and I was doing that for around I think two three years and then I bought bicycle and I got into mountain biking and competing competing with mountain biking got into the climbing as well that's why I joined the Westwood Club back then because I had a nice pool and a really good climbing wall so I enjoyed that and yeah, I love driving around. That's really since since I was a kid. I think it was my father's. We never had a car, so we always used buses, trains. We rarely been actually in cars. So, but we were cycling everywhere within the 5k, uh, another city. Uh, we could cycle easily or take a bus. So that wasn't a problem. But I realized I really love driving. So even though nobody showed me around the cars, I kind of developed my own, um, you know interest and also found plenty of YouTube videos where I learned how to you know you know all about cars really and that was interesting I think and so yeah yeah I always find it relaxing uh, driving it's just for me it's a sort of a therapy really um, I like the feel of turning in accelerating braking little bumps and so on so yeah the driving is really one of the major hobbies for me <clears throat> something which i can do for hours and hours and hours and the gist of it is that you know like you know the, the abundance of the universe but how you can attract your dream life and you know i've been dreaming my dream life for a really long time and uh, maybe something over 20 years now and just kind of like stepping up from my current conditions and you know realizing that oh no this is not the life i want uh, this is not it this is not making me happy and then just kind of shifting um, you know towards that bigger goal and moving to ireland for example was one of the goals because i felt uh, Slovakia and financially would be very hard for me to achieve my goals. I felt it would be much easier in another country which is more generous with uh, pay per hour and also opportunities. So no regrets going to Ireland, really fell in love with uh, the country, with people. English is a great language, I, I really enjoy it and it's my fourth language, uh, third language, but really I, I think English is the, 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 the world's best language which is its own funny things but you know what um, I think it's great to be able to communicate around the world because everybody's learning English and so as we're talking about those hobbies and the dream life uh, basically the thing is you know I, I followed a couple of great philosophers and motivational speakers and and a couple of very su successful people they all say you have to follow your passion and, and basically do things you love and eventually you find people who will pay you to do what you love so you know like you have to think as well like uh, you know opportunities out there so I didn't see my opportunities where I was back then maybe now if I was there 20 years later I would realize those opportunities as well but sometimes we don't know what we don't know what's possible and you know sometimes just be confident and brave and a little bit of belief and just follow uh, the kind of keep up good work and eventually it will come back to you um, 
maybe it's not guaranteed, but that's at least how I feel it, that the harder I worked, the more I attract people who recognize my skills and maybe my drive. Who knows why people gave me opportunity. But on my path, I met a couple of interesting people who really helped me to step up my um, profession and eventually you know, get more high paying clients or doing business with me. And it's just, you know, we all individual people, we all uh, have interests and we all have our own preferences. And so sometimes, you know, like if you like someone and you know they can do the job, why would they give the job someone else they don't like or they don't know if they already trust you? So I think building trust and building your circle of people, it's very important for any business really. But um, I was lucky to meet a couple of really, really good uh, business people in my previous job in Westwood Club in Sunnymount. And I even had private private uh, meeting with uh, some of the very, very wealthy people and very knowledgeable people in business. And I just asked a lot of questions and uh, basically got uh, great coaching. And some of the best um, I- uh, ideas was just, you know, persistence. You know, it, it was just like in your business, persistence is the key. And yeah, I tried different businesses. I opened up my own LTD, two actually, two LTDs uh, with a couple of friends and realized that's not really what I wanted. I, I didn't feel right about it. Uh, running business for me, it's, it's no fun. I hate accounting. Um, you know, it's not something I'm good at. So obviously I don't like it as much, but it's all about being organized and having a system. So. I'm improving, but again, it, it's it's all about doing what you love. And so, you know, if you think you can make more money having your personal business, great, but are you willing to put 60 hours a week for a couple of years before you actually get anything paid? So I know people, like my brother, he was working on his business for many years, and there was there were lots of loans, uh, and things were not going very well at some times, and you know, now it's going well, but, you know, nobody's looking, uh, nobody's talking about like how hard it was at the beginning. But it's with other, uh, any other jobs as well. So, you know, when I become became trainer, I actually couldn't afford to have a car because it was too expensive for me uh, to, to pay all the bills and the, the job wasn't paying me enough. So even though I found a job I enjoyed, I worked a lot, I worked hard, but it wasn't paying me enough. So I had to realize that, okay, so now, I have to either work on myself or completely find a new profession. And I really like the profession of personal trainings and, uh, and fitness instructions, uh, so classes, fitness classes. And I didn't want to change profession because I really felt that this is something I enjoy. So um, eventually, you know, when I was, I remember, uh, quite broke, uh, didn't have that much money and just sign up for free a library membership and in city center where we live there and I would just read books on fitness and exercise and uh, weight loss and all that stuff and eventually uh, it, it seems like eventually you know when I got my knowledge my my sort of confidence in what I know uh, raised up people start to observe it as well the way I explain things start to be more professional a little bit more deeper so I think people would recognize uh, when you when you really understand something <clears throat> and I realized that a lot of people have that disposable income to pay let's say two three hundred or even up to five hundred euro every month to pay for your services as a trainer as a coach to basically help them to be fitter leaner healthier or even just with consistency and just to train and have a little chat with them be friendly with them and be there for them help them to kind of transition from let's say uh, certain addictions on food or you know like lacking motivation in general in life and just bring some positive aspects to it into the coaching so i have realized that um, you know it's really important that you are able to evolve somewhere so yes personally i would want to work at the checkout in some kind of shopping center and every day just moving a bunch of uh, products and i'm not saying that's that's something wrong but i feel like i would um, basically not fully using my potential i love talking to people i like kind of high energy and, and 
dynamic environments. I like if I can move around, not to be locked in one room, for example. But for example, now, you know, I, I drive to clients and even just the fact that I always go to different house, I can also drive 15, 20, 30 minutes between clients. Some of them only, only five because I'm kind of based in Sandy Mount mostly. All these 10 years I was working there really brought a lot of momentum in a sense of word of mouth. And I don't really advertise, but people who, who like my services as a coach, they tell their friends. And since it's like a small community over there and with fairly wealthy people, and so many of them can, can afford my fees. Uh, so it really supports me in that way that you know I don't have to be employed working for much less uh, than I'm earning now and it's really about you know finding that uh, confidence and being able to ask uh, the clients uh, that amount of money that it will sustain my life uh, really well and rather than surviving as I used to to be thriving and uh, basically uh, being able to save up for a house you know so um 40 years uh, 40 years old this year you know for me it was very frustrating going through my whole 30s being kind of like you know not earning enough money to be you know like i love my hobbies and uh, even fuel for example it's cost so having abundance to be able to just drive 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 and not looking at uh, at the uh, how much money I have left in my bank account. So abundance is really important for um, well-being and for uh, some sort of satisfaction on deeper level. And it's really just uh, as well, it's the security uh, because nobody wants to be unsecured and not be able to pay bills or having something more like premium. So, you know, I'm saying that it's possible to work on yourself and dream better life and uh, it doesn't mean that everybody have to basically um, you know constantly chasing some kind of goal and not being happy uh, to be one two three four ten twenty thirty years being very comfortable uh, because that's what i used to do uh, i didn't want any job which is stressful I wanted jobs that was like easy peasy and just basically kind of living for myself and following my passions so yeah I don't know what else I would add to this one, except just, you know, if you're not happy with your life, you need to ask yourself, what, what will make you happy in your life? Uh, sometimes we think it's different job, it's different people around us, it's different um, uh, country, it's just always something is wrong. So sometimes when you think everything is always wrong and uh, things are bad, ask yourself, uh, you know, as well, um, you know, why don't you change things and kind of progress from the sort of like a boring or sad or dramatic part of your life because they have wrong people around. So just observe people and, um, you know, like see what kind of energy that attracts, you know, and then, you know, it's in your hands and always it starts with intention belief and then action so action and the momentum the persistence of that action and just evolving it so yeah that's just idea this is a solo podcast uh, if you are interested to listen more of the podcasts i've done in the past i had privilege to had some really amazing people every one of them amazing people uh, on my podcast so out of Winkler podcast on youtube on spotify on google podcasts on apple podcasts just search my name out of Winkler podcast and there's no other out of Winkler with one t so it's easy to find and i talk to you guys when i will talk to you later again